Why couldn't we have done this during the day? Because I work for a living. I hate this house at night. All you had to do was give me the key and I could have done this by myself. Yeah, well, if I'd let you come alone, you would have taken everything but the walls. Sure, I would have stolen a six-foot armoire. Not you, your lawyer. for my apartment. Howard, I have a client who wants this for his restaurant. Well, fine. You take what you want, and I'll take what I want. Haven't you already done that, lover boy? Don't you want to talk about it? Well, Howard, I want to talk about it. Now talk to yourself. Howard. Oh, I've got a few things to say to you. Just how stupid do you think I am? Do you think that I wouldn't find out about it? Look, well, you don't like it, well, let's talk, baby. You shut up because I've had it. been on the same wavelength. I wanted you to have a photographer at the harbor uh, tomorrow morning at 7. Cover the arrival of the world's largest floating dry dock. Gee, how did you forget something fascinating like that? Okay, I've got it. Okay, thanks. Lou, wait a minute. Don't hang up. I called you, remember? Oh, yeah. I've decided to go to my sister's wedding in Phoenix, so I'll need someone to cover for me Friday night. I'm writing a note to myself now. Also, there's been a homicide in South Pasadena. Everyone here was busy, so I sent Billy. She's the only one I can find home at this hour. Ted's gonna love that. Do you ever think of becoming a marriage counselor? It's Billy's kind of story. What do you mean? Well, it's a shepherd house. Shepherd house? Yeah. 
A bunch of parapsychologists have been studying it. What? It's supposed to be haunted. Oh, we're still talking to him. It's pretty open and shut. Well, let's just say he's a suspect, okay? Witnesses? Nobody. Except the ghosts. Huh? You know, there's supposed to be spirits in there. You're kidding. You see anything spooky? Nothing I'd admit to you. Oh, come on, tell me. I won't print it. I'm just curious. Famous last words. I swear, I won't print it. Look, it wouldn't be good for my hard-boiled image. If you saw something, you saw something. It doesn't mean you believe in ghosts. Okay, but it wasn't much. I'm standing in the kitchen there, and this bar stool starts turning all by itself, and nobody was standing near it. <laughs> you hard-boiled cops just love to put on impressionable young girl reporters. You? I wouldn't put you on. Then, were you? Um, of course not. I thought I saw some kids over there. What do you think that is? Evidence. Oh, hi, Billy. Glad you busted your buns to get in time for lunch. I didn't get home till three in the morning on that story. Oh, that's right. Homicide in South Pasadena. I pulled some clips on that house. It's supposed to be haunted, you know. No. There was a little girl murdered there 10 years ago. I remember that. You ever find the guy? No, I never did. That's funny. Sergeant Rush didn't mention that to me last night. Unsolved murders are not a source of pride in the police department. The house has been sold several times since then. People can't seem to live in it. They hear footsteps, see vases floating, hear screams and disembodied voices. That's a lease buster. This is creepy. The little girl who was murdered there was found on the staircase. That's exactly where the woman last night was killed. Can I have this? Sure. Posse, I've wanted to ask you. Do you drive a red car? No, and I'm not in your space, Charlie. It's somebody else. My car is blue. Marion had one of her dreams. If it's about the fights, let's hear it. I went with her dream the last time I won a bundle. Nothing that big. She dreamt that Rossi was driving a red car. Well, if you weren't in one today, number one. Well, the guy did give me a lift from the garage in a red van. Does that count? Does that count? Of course it counts. I'm telling you, Marion is uncanny. So what does it mean? What happened in the dream? Do I come out all right? I'm not going to tell you what happened. But you keep your hands off my wife. Just came in on city news service. Going to make your story a whole lot more interesting. Police book Howard Kraft. Oh, uh, why is that interesting? He was alone in the house with her when she was killed. It's pretty open and shut. Maybe not. Felix Cunningham just signed on as his attorney. Is that like a dinosaur bone? I think it's like a fragment of a whale vertebrae. Well, then, what's it doing up here in the mountains? Where we are. It used to be the bottom of an ancient sea. Don't you know that? Are you an archaeologist or what? No, I just volunteer on the weekend. May I ask you a question, too? Sure. Why does a defense lawyer with an exceptional track record take on a hopeless case like Howard Kraft? 
That question doesn't have a lot to do with paleontology. Because it isn't hopeless. Mr. Cunningham, I'm Billy Newman from the Tribune. You don't mind walking for a story, do you? No, I read this as one of your interests. Are you on the newspaper's time or your own? I guess my own. Ooh, you're very enterprising. You drop things a lot? <laughs> no. Why? Yeah. Dust this very carefully. I took the case because, number one, in interviewing Mr. Kraft, I was convinced he didn't kill his wife. And secondly, the history of that house persuades me there are other forces operating inside it that could have been responsible for her death. Other forces? What are you talking about? Some people call them poltergeists. I don't care what the term is, but experts in the field have been studying the Shepherd House for a long time. So I've read. That house had six owners in the last 10 years. And since that child was killed there, other people have had strange experiences. They've fallen down, have been thrown from those stairs where the little girl was murdered. I spoke with a young man hurt at the same spot. It was chilly. He said he was pushed by a pair of strong hands when there was nobody else near him. Who is the young man? You'll see him at the trial. You know, the victim, Constance Kraft, was convinced the house was haunted and believed it had destroyed her marriage. This notion was reinforced by her sister, Josephine, who was kind of a, of a psychic. Well, with these arguments and some scientific evidence I plan to provide, I think I can make it difficult for the state to prove Howard Kraft is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. A poltergeist killed her. That's how you're going to plead in court. A poltergeist could have killed her. That's how we're going to plead in court. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. a and &E returns to Lou Grant. What are those, UFOs? I don't know what they are. I wish I did. I thought you'd be getting into the extraterrestrial after your last story. It was interesting, wasn't it? You had fun writing it. Yeah, I did. It showed. What do you mean? Now, don't get defensive. That approach is probably okay for a story like this, except for the fact that a man is on trial for his life. Calling it the poltergeist defense tends to make light of it. Well, I'm sorry you feel that, Rossi, because if ever there was a time for healthy skepticism, it's when a lawyer claims that ghosts did the victim in. Like the kid who claimed watching TV inspired him to murder four people. Or the guy who said that eating too many cupcakes gave him a homicidal sugar high. Here you notes. All I know is a man's life is on the line, and I myself would think twice before writing it up like a Halloween prank. Of course you would. A friend of mine used to hunt spooks. In an old farmhouse once, they thought they heard breathing. There was always this cold spot in the dining room. They found the cold spot, all right. The attic was drawing in air from the outside and creating a draft, and the breathing was a wild cat up in the attic. Yeah, I think all these things have simple explanations. It just takes common sense. I mean, spoon bending is a fraud. And oddly enough, Ouija boards always work better when everybody already knows the answer. That's what this is. What is it? This. This. Where's Lou? Well, I guess he just uh, vanished. <laughs> we went to lunch. Lou. Lou, don't leave the building. I'm sorry. Don't... I'm really sorry. That was clumsy. Oh. oh, I'm glad I caught you. Uh, Charlie asked me to bring a copy on Burroughs Street to lunch, so naturally I forgot it. I figured out what the cops found outside the house the night of the murder. It's the marker to a Ouija board. And those kids I saw running away may have been witnesses. What makes you think so? Well, you don't play with a Ouija board outside in the dark on a cold night. I, I bet those kids were inside the house. Could be. Who do you think they are, neighborhood kids? I don't know. Can I try to find them? How are you going to do that? Maybe with a Ouija board. Hi, Danny. Yeah. Are you Walter? Mm-hmm. Hi. I'm Billy Newton from the Trigger. Can I ask you a couple questions? You're a reporter? How'd you find me? I asked around the neighborhood. Not many guys your age have a cast on their own. Oh, 
Right. I saw you hanging around the Shepherd house the night of the murder. Both of you. Not us. Well, it was somebody who looked a lot like you. The police found some evidence there, you know? Uh, part of a Ouija board. That little thing that moves around. It's called a planchette. Oh, really? What's that for? I just want to write that down. Planchette. Well, well that's what it's called, just in case you ever want to know. The Ouija board wasn't ours. But you were playing with it inside the house? <sighs> okay, look, we were there, but Stop we didn't... Stop this, Baz. What are you saying? All they have to do is trace our fingerprints, you idiot. We didn't see anything. I'm not kidding. I mean, straight with you. Okay. We heard someone come in and split before anything happened. Whose Ouija board is it? It usually takes more than two people to play. Who's the other guy? There wasn't another guy. Okay. How'd you do that? I fell. Where? Um, like some steps. Sounds like you don't want to talk about it. I can understand. Did Mr. Cunningham say you shouldn't before the trial? Yeah. Okay. Walter, Danny, thanks. You've been a big help. As we lay my beloved sister Constance to rest, let us not dwell on death, but on the fragile nature of life that God has given us. We mustn't think that Constance has left us. Rather, she has just moved on to another plane of existence, perhaps more peaceful than the one she left. I believe this world is a laboratory where we work out the mistakes of the past to live without ego in the present moment, to be aware of the beautiful eternity before us and after us. Death is a curtain, and we go back and forth from different planes of existence until we have fulfilled our karma and we are ready to move on to higher realms until we have reached the inner circle and we are one with God. Constance came to share these views with me and although she has been taken from us by violent means, the lessons that she learned in this life have given her wisdom. She is safe now. She has come home. I know she is with us, and in her happiness, she is able to forgive those who treated her ill. Mr. Cunningham? You certainly turn up in the strangest places. I know this isn't a good time, but do you think I could speak to Mr. Kraft? Howard, this is Billy Newman from the Tribune. Do you feel like talking? What do you think, Claude? There's nothing to hide. May I ask you if you feel your interests are well served by going with the poltergeist defense? You're calling it that. We didn't. I don't care what you call it. Frankly, I have no other explanation. I know I didn't push my wife. So you believe the house is haunted? Well, I didn't before, but you know, Constance did. We used to argue about it. In fact, I think it contributed to the failure of our marriage. But now there isn't any doubt that there are forces in that house which we cannot logically understand. Would you care to expand on that? Look, I was five feet from her when she fell. None of my research has turned up evidence of poltergeists hurting people. They're supposed to be rather benign, almost playful. She went over that banister with a tremendous force, and I didn't touch her. Now, that doesn't sound very playful to me, does it to you? I'm innocent. It really is. Then why not just plead innocent? Can't you make a case for it? He had a deteriorating relationship with his wife. People saw them fighting in public. It's not that simple. Couldn't it have been an accident? The way she fell and the trajectory of the body indicate the victim was pushed. It's not going to be an easy argument. You can't put a ghost on the stand. I can hope to convince a jury that there was something unnatural in that house at that time. It sounds to me like you're trying to shift the issue from whether he's innocent or not to a debate on the existence of ghosts. I'm glad you're not on the jury. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E.
Thank you for coming. Were you a friend of my sister's? Not really. Billy Newman. I'm sorry. You're a writer. How did you know? Oh, your hand. I can tell these things. I was told you were psychic. Yes. May I ask you how you feel about this poltergeist defense that your brother-in-law and Mr. Cunningham are relying on? Well, I don't know, but I certainly don't approve of the seance. Seance? To prove the house is haunted, they've asked a team of scientific experts to hold a seance and testify to their findings. Who are the experts? Dr. Lucille Haas. Lucille Haas? Even I've heard of her. The house is full of unrest. Anyone can feel it. They don't know what they're unleashing. But wouldn't the results be crucial to Howard's defense? Howard brought my sister to that house. You can understand why I'm not terribly concerned with his defense. Excuse me. I don't have my credit card number. Because I don't have my credit card. I lost it. When I lost my wallet. Don't you people file accounts by name anymore? Rent. Comma. Lou. I'll wait. Music to get high blood pressure by. Did you check all of the pockets of all your pants? I've looked everywhere. Could it have slipped out when you bent over or something? Last time I did somersaults in the city room. Could you left it in the store? It was gone when I got to McKenna. I hope the old lady pickpocket from Bunker Hill didn't get it. You remember her? 82 years old. And what a pro. Oh, boy. That's all I need at this moment all over town. Support stockings and porcelain statuettes of shepherds are being charged to my card. I have a great idea for art for Billy's story. Mm. A time exposure taken at night. See, you set up the camera like in front of this haunted house, open the lens, expose the film for a couple of minutes. The effect is kind of ghostly and weird. As long as it's legit, you can't alter it in the dark room. Oh, no way. I'll only print what's in the negative. I want the reader to know that. Your credit line should say, time, exposure, photography, buy. Gotcha. In 90% of these cases, the person is haunted, not the house. So those cases you treat clinically. And the rest? 10% of the time, we really do find something interesting. Dr. Haas, you're a conventionally trained psychologist with, what, 25 years experience? Nearly 30. And you didn't have any trouble accepting these way out theories of uh, apparitions, ESP, paranormal experiences? Much of what was considered way out is commonplace in medical practice today. Hypnosis near-death experience i'm afraid i'm skeptical good stay skeptical it's a healthy place to be i want proof myself the problem is you can't get a ghost to appear in a laboratory so you can't measure it but that doesn't mean these things don't exist have you ever seen an apparition i've been with people who are sensitive who said don't you see that over there and no i don't see it i simply don't have that gift of vision of course, non-psychics see apparitions, too. Maybe I'm just not lucky. You have an excellent reputation. Why are you allowing yourself to be used by the defense in a murder case? Oh, I don't feel I'm being used. Mr. Cunningham says he won't interfere with the seance. It's just an opportunity for research. May I come? If you follow my instructions carefully. I will. First of all, don't have high expectations. Most psychic research is boring and nothing happens. Okay. We hold a seance because it's traditional. We don't know why it works. We also observe the traditions that go along with it. The joining of hands, the not breaking the circle. You mustn't break the circle under any circumstances. What would happen? First of all, it's dark. And in the dark, people like human contact. The power of suggestion is strong. You'll be glad to have someone to hold on to. Beyond that, 
there well may be powers we're stirring up that we don't understand. In that case, all of us together are strong. One isolated is vulnerable. Continue in a moment here on A and E. Are we doing the right thing with that story about? Poldergeist defense. I'm very uncomfortable with making it an amusing piece. The readers love it. They're eating it up. Well, it's just not a subject that amuses me, dealing with the afterlife. You know, you may laugh at me, but when I had my stroke, apparently at one point things got rather dicey, and they tell me I stopped breathing. Now, I remember a peculiar feeling of being lifted out of my body and floating above the scene, looking down on myself. I remember passing through a long tunnel with light at the end of it. And there were friends that I had known waiting for me. Well, I never did reach them because I woke up and found myself in the hospital. That's called an out-of-body experience. Is it really? Well, it's quite well documented. They think they have an explanation for it. And what would that be? Well, when a person is close to death, there is a neurochemical reaction in the brain, sort of like if the switchboard went crazy. All the neurons fire at once. The things you've described are quite common, similar to the hallucinations under drugs. And I am just as uncomfortable with mysticism as you are. But I tell you, that experience was very profound and quite real. But I have come to accept the fact that there are many more mysteries on this earth than I could have accepted a few years ago. Now, concentrate all of your attention on that point where my fingers are making contact with the spoon. All of your energies at that point. We'll see if we can make something happen. I feel the spoon getting warmer. Something's starting to happen. Concentrate. Concentrate all of your attention there. Don't laugh. Concentrate. Something's happening. Oh, how did you do that? Can you keep a secret? Yes. So can I. But I assure you, there's nothing psychic about it. Any master magician can bend a spoon these days. So all those spoon bendings and key bendings are fake? Those that I've observed. Don't touch it. We've pinned sewing thread top to bottom on all the doorways. That way, if anyone tries to sneak in or out when it's dark, they'll break the thread. Very clever. What else? Well, Dr. Haas and I have measured the entire house inside and out and compared those measurements with the architect's plans. We're looking for uh, secret rooms, wide crawl spaces, uh, evidence of the house settling which could account for creaking noises or doors closing by themselves, that sort of thing. Did you find anything unusual? Nothing at all. I think we can be certain that when we start tonight, we'll be all alone in this room. Excuse me. Let's go through some ritual here. Would everyone witness that these tapes and this film has never been opened? Witnessed. Witness. Billy? How do you find the house? Oh, there's definite coldness on the staircase. And just above the banister where she fell in getting some activity. This is Rose, our medium. Hello. Hello. May I ask you how much the defense attorney is paying for your services tonight? I never take money. I believe we should give freely of that which is given to us. Shall we settle down? Over here, Billy. Lucille, do we know if there's been a poltergeist agent anywhere in the house? What's that? 
there's a correlation between poltergeist activity and the presence of teenagers, especially adolescent girls. Unconsciously, they project sexual energy into the environment, causing things to happen, objects to fly, doors to open. Alec, there was a young girl here when that boy fell and broke his wrist a few months ago. A girl? One of his friends? Presumably. This is not fairy dust. This is to mark footprints. The shoe size of the entity is very important. <laughs> well, are we ready? Not quite. Is there room in your circle? I wanted to show this to you before you went home. Good. Nice effect. The house really looks weird. Uh, look closer at that downstairs window. What's that? Looks like someone's standing there. Yeah, I know. But nobody was. Uh, it must be uh, dust or something on the negative. Not that I can tell. You know, there's a theory these entities don't go through the lens, but uh, somehow impress themselves directly on the film. Are you asking me to buy that? Oh, no, uh, I don't believe any of that stuff. So what are some other explanations? Oh, reciprocity, failure, old developing chemicals, flaw in the paper stock. Did you check all those things? Yeah. I don't think it's any of them. So what's your explanation? Are you telling me this is a picture of something supernatural? Well, uh, I don't know. I, I think it just kind of happened. Keep your eyes open. Don't be afraid to speak up if you see something so a photographer will know where to shoot. Now familiarize yourself with every reflection and glimmer of light so you'll know if you see something unusual. If there's anyone or anything in the house, we ask that you make yourself present to us. We want to communicate. We wish you no harm. What's that? Where? Over there, against the wall. I is that... Oh, no. I'm sorry. It's coming from the flash gun, the back of it. It's the ready light. I knew it was too good to be true. Billy, are you all right? Yes. You squeezed my hand so awfully tight. <laughs> I just didn't expect it, that's all. Tell us if you want to stop. We've all been through this before. Thanks. I'm fine. Join us. Contact us. Make a physical noise. Push something. Knock on something. Make a noise and let us know you're here. We come with only good intentions. Everyone. Clear your mind. Feel the energy flowing through our hands. Round and round, blue energy, like blue light. Does anyone feel a draft? Yes. It's getting colder down around our hands. I can feel it, too. It's definitely getting colder. If you are the spirit of the child who was killed in this house, please come to us now. What was that? Where? What direction? Toward the stairs. What did you hear? A creak or a knocking. Shh. Come to us now. Speak through me. Tell us your name. Give us a sign. Keep shooting! Don't stop! Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. A book on the floor. Stop the presses. Yeah, but a second before it was on the shelf. Stop the presses again. I mean, it went flying through the air. The photographer just couldn't catch it in time. Uh-huh. <sighs> Listen. 
first there was this cool breeze. We all felt it, even though the windows were closed and it was hot and stuffy in there. And then right after we felt it, this book comes flying out of the bookshelf, I swear to God, all by itself. Come on, nobody was standing near it? No, and there was not a mark on the talcum powder, none of the doorway threads were broken. How did that book move? Today's army wants you. Me? I'm not kidding. Just had a call from the U.S. Army. They would like you to brief them on everything you know about the Shepherd House and the Kraft Murray case. Oh, no. Do you agree to that? Gave me a lot of stuff. Boy, is it impressive. For instance, the Army, the Navy, the CIA, the National Security Agency, they've all been involved in psychic research. That's cute. Each one trying to find out what the other's doing. You mean the government is really putting money into this? Apparently they are. They don't say how much. The Russians are doing it, too, and they're supposed to be ahead of us. They spent millions on psychic research, and apparently they make breakthroughs in curly and photography. You mean taking pictures of auras? Right. That's the energy given off by living things. Yeah, but the Army now claims that auras are nothing more than body moisture interacting with the Earth's magnetic field. They've gotten pictures of auras around wet sponges and bowls of spaghetti. Hey, that research is important. I heard the Russians have a spaghetti bomb. I can't believe you'd give those guys access to what Billy learned. Are you crazy? I'd never do that. So what'd you tell them? I told them that we wouldn't cooperate. And I turned them over to a great source, Marion. She'll keep them busy for a while. <laughs> you know, Lou, I did find out something interesting last night. There was a girl in the house the night that boy Danny broke his arm. I thought they were protecting somebody, but it never occurred to me it was a girl. You think she was there that night and witnessed the murder? She may have seen something they didn't. Why don't you follow that up? But first, you better tell the police what you know about it. Okay, I'll call Sergeant Roche. Oh, by the way, I asked the medium about your wallet. Yeah. She said, look in the trash. Thanks. Morning, Charlie. Hey, Lou, uh, you haven't hired anybody new, have you? Not controlling you? Of course not. Good morning. Oh, hi, Donovan. No, 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 that's not why I'm asking. Marion had another dream last night. She's quite disturbed by it. She said there was a new man in the sitting room who was in terrible danger. She saw blood all over the place. I know it sounds silly, but she didn't sleep all night. No new men around here. No new women. So right that. Billy Newman? This is Josephine. Bowers. I'm calling from the Shepherd House. I had to let you know there's something very wrong here. What is it? Ever since last night, I've had the very strong feeling that a child was still trapped in this house. What we saw was an entity letting us know it was here. Now I know it's in great pain. It's talking to me. Talking to you? through the cards. It needs to be freed. The poor thing doesn't even know it's dead. I think it's the ghost of the little girl who was murdered and it hasn't passed over to the other side. It's still trapped. Listen, Josephine, what we saw last night may have been the house settling or a trick of some kind. No. I'm here and I feel it. I'm going to set it free. Will you come here now? I think we should have other witnesses. We shouldn't be there alone. We won't be alone. All right. Here's a schedule for the new shuttle bus to the garage. Mrs. Pinchon went for it. Listen, she's hiring new security guards as well. Hey, 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 you must have some magic influence over her. <laughs> I think it's called guilt. You know who the new man in the city room might be? The one that Marion saw in her dream? Who's in terrible danger? Who? Billy. Billy? How's that? Newman. Billy New Man. Hello? 
Josephine. Oh, Billy. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. I was just trying to see how Constance could have fallen where she did. It's true. An object would have to be thrown to go that far. I'm glad to see you. Don't be afraid. Oh, I'm not afraid. Spirits aren't evil, just people. I just felt too sick to tell anybody. And the more I waited, the more I knew you'd all be mad. I didn't know anything about this. She'd been in bed all week with a stomachache. It's okay, Emily. Nobody's mad at you. Just tell me what you saw. I was hiding, but I could hear what they were saying. But they hated each other. They were fighting. About what? They were on top of the stairs. Josephine, I'm more worried about you than I am about the ghost. Don't worry about me. I think you're very upset about your sister's death. And maybe your imagination is a little vivid after last night. I'm here to cover the story, but I do wish you'd call Dr. Haas and explain what you're feeling. The ghost talking to you and stuff. It doesn't matter whether you believe me. It only matters that you're here. They were saying stuff about this woman. What kind of stuff? That she and the man, you know. I, I think I do, Emily, but you have to tell me because this is very important. That he and this other woman have making love. What was this other woman's name, did they say? Oh, they said it a lot, Josephine. Josephine? Right. She was saying, how could he do this with my own sister? Right in front of my nose, with my sister. This is the spot that it always happens. So are you getting any feelings? Look how far she fell. Yes, you see, something had to push her. Oh, no. It's back, and it's coming from the basement. You gotta be kidding. Come on. Uh, no, I'll, I'll wait right here, thanks. The child is here. I'm sure of it. I'm okay as long as there aren't rats. If we see one rat, we're leaving. Over here. Very close. These are good skis. That's it. There it is. seen a trial turn around on a dime you should have heard the testimony today what? a little girl told the jury all about how she heard howard and constance fighting it turns out that howard was having an affair with josephine his sister-in-law josephine was sitting in the courtroom she turned as red as a beet and i thought cunningham the lawyer was going to have a stroke mm -hmm. the poor man was trying to keep his cool but you could tell it was the first he'd heard of it isn't that the way the poltergeist defense will always fold when lust nears its ugly head. Eh? Well, let's not go knocking lust. So Howard will change his plea to guilty, and this will wrap up in a few weeks. You got 600 words. Uh, I need more. What? The police also proved today that the doll we found in the house belonged to the murdered child. And since we took it out of the house, there's been no strange activity. The spirit was laid to rest. Uh, uh, by the way, Lucille Haas called you. I know. She invited me to another seance. I said, no thanks. But you like to be scared. <laughs> Not scared like that. I know in the history of the world, one book moving out of a bookshelf, apparently all by itself, is no big deal, but it can't be explained, and I, I don't want to think about it.
City does. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll accept. Hello, Lieutenant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like mine. Great. Uh, so, so, no, send it back anyway. Yeah, it has sentimental value. Thanks a lot for calling. <laughs> yeah, okay. They found my wallet. Where was it? San Francisco. Somehow it was stolen. They took the money and most of the credit cards and then threw the wall of the way. They found it in a bus station. In the trash. His illustrations captured the spirit of America. Let's meet one of the most beloved American artists of this century, Norman Rockwell, tonight on Biography. Now, the Homicide Squad gears up to find a killer when a double shooting leads to murder. Join us for Police Story, next on A&A. &E.